Hello, my name is Randy Hauer, Product Manager for Soft Recovery Analyzers here at Amatech Processed Instruments. Today we're going to take you through the full qualitative measurement of acid gas for feedforward control of the soft recovery unit. Your interest in the subject suggests you know something about the process already, but let's go over some of the basics looking at the process flow and instrumentation drawing of a typical closed soft recovery unit you would find in a refinery or a gas plant. The closed sulfur recovery process is the partial oxidation of H2S to SO2 and conversion to elemental sulfur by maintaining a 2 to 1 ratio of H2S to SO2. There are several factors that affect recovery efficiency of the SRU, but air control, air demand, is by far the most dynamic and has the most influence on the recovery efficiency. Feedback trim air control based on the reaction products of H2S and SO2 in the tail gas is the primary control element and provides the most precision. However, it is limited by the 30 second process lag time, especially if the composition of the acid gas changes rapidly or the SRU is in turndown, i.e. low flow conditions. Feedback control is suitable under slow moving equilibrium conditions, but not sufficient during hydrocarbon upsets in the acid gas when the process is fast moving and the control requirements are dynamic. For this purpose, feed forward control based on a full compositional analysis of the reactants is required. During a process upset, simple feed forward control of the air based on a fixed air to gas ratio is not sufficient to maintain steady state control. A compositional analysis is required to account for the rapidly changing H2S and hydrocarbon components in the acid gas. Here is a real life example of an Amatec feed gas analyzer on amide acid gas during an upset. During the upset, the H2S swings from 83 to 87 and back to steady state, while the total hydrocarbon, methane equivalent, spikes to 0.25% and back to baseline. The control impact of this is quite significant. Whereas the feedback control loop can maintain steady state control of say plus minus 5%, the sudden swings of H2S and hydrocarbons seen here combine to make an approximate absolute value of 20% air demand, four times more than the response capability of the feedback loop. What is just as impactful is the three minute short duration of the hydrocarbon spike, which will result in the feedback control system reacting to increase air demand just as the hydrocarbon is going away and can be a cause of further control instability. The impact of a process upset and wide deviation from two to one ratio conditions are increased emissions and possible damage to the amine in the downstream tail gas treater. What is required is real-time analysis of the combustion components and the analysis time is paramount. Let's first look at the hydrocarbon measurement. What seems to complicate this is that there are multiple hydrocarbon components present. Each component has an increasing air demand and this would appear to require individual quantification of the methane, the ethane, the propane, all the way up to C6. While well, the hydrocarbon is a relatively minor component in SRU acid gas, it is fast moving and consumes on average 11 times as much air relative to the effect on the partial combustion of H2S to SO2. In the interest of speed, rather than try and speciate the hydrocarbon components, it is sufficient for control purposes to make a single measurement of total hydrocarbon content provided it accounts for the total air demand and this can be accomplished using simple infrared techniques. In terms of real-time control, this is much superior to an individual component analysis of the hydrocarbon requiring minutes versus seconds. By using a combination of infrared and UV spectroscopy, the measurement can be made within two seconds and predict with sufficient accuracy the required volume of combustion air needed to be on ratio. It is not important to know how much individual C1, C2, C3, all the way up to C6 in the acid gas just the total aggregate in terms of total air demand by knowing the total hydrocarbon as methane equivalent. Here's how it's done. Infrared spectroscopy can be used to measure hydrocarbon concentrations rapidly, but for complex mixtures the hydrocarbon spectra are similar, so IR cannot easily distinguish the individual components. Online analytical techniques which can do this, such as gas chromatography, must separate each hydrocarbon and are consequently far too slow for effective rapid combustion control. However, in the IR, a specific vibration around 3.3 to 3.5 microns represents the concentration of the carbon-hydrogen bonds, the stretch vibrations. 
There is a linear relationship between the number of carbon-hydrogen bonds and the intensity of the absorption, so this measurement can be made within two seconds. This in turn can be used to indicate the total concentration of carbon-hydrogen in the sample as methane equivalent, and that's all that is really needed for fast, feed-forward combustion control. Now here's a look at the analyzers. We talk about the simpler H2S measurement and additional analytical components that are available. This is what makes the IPS4 analyzer unique, the combination of UV and infrared photometers in one analyzer. Now, besides the hydrocarbon quantification, H2S is also required in feedforward control, as well as ammonia, carbon dioxide, H2O, depending on the application. Let's go over the nature and utility of these additional measurements. While H2S is the major combustion component, it is normally slow moving in terms of compositional change as compared to hydrocarbon, which is a relatively minor component but fast moving and has a significant air requirement. Ammonia, NH3, is present in sour water stripper gas found in refinery SRUs and must be quantified for, for combustion purposes. BTEX, that's benzene, toluene, ethylbenzene, and xylene. Utilizing the strong absorptivity of cyclic hydrocarbon in the UV spectrum, a separate value for these four aromatic components can be recorded for the control of coal firing to thermally destruct them to prevent damage to the Klaus catalyst. CO2, carbon dioxide. It's not a combustion component, but it is useful information for lean acid gas conditions found in gas plants. H2O, water vapor. While not contributing to air demand, it can be used for gas gravity adjustments for finer air control. To process the data and generate discrete 4 to 20 milliamp signals, Amatech utilizes a proprietary technique of mid-level data fusion, combining the IR and UV spectral data to quantify the aliphatic hydrocarbons in the infrared, while the H2S and ammonia measurements are made with the UV spectrophotometer. It is worth noting here, while h 2 absorbs in the infrared, it is also subject to cross interference from the changing hydrocarbon components during an upset. An independent measurement of H2S is essential if it is to be utilized for feed forward control. The last word, safety. The analyzer is rated for IP65 and can be installed outdoors. It does not need to be contained in a cabinet, a simple sunshade will suffice. Let's look at how the sample is handled, view with the HAG probe in its entirety, and then impartial disassembly for a look inside at the component parts of the HAG probe. Acid gas is highly toxic. How to safely transport the sample, dispose the sample, and ensure isolation from the process are the essential elements. The HAG probe was purposely designed for this service. The sample handling functionality is machined into a stainless steel body to minimize dead volume, and the motive force, the aspiration, thereby eliminating the pump. The spent sample is returned to process at the sample point. And there are double block valves on both the sample and the vent. The first thing to note is the sample is maintained above the water dew point. Hot, wet sample handling. No water removal, no pump, or associated dead volume. This vastly improves the sample transport time and reduces hazardous risk. Here is the HAG probe. This is the heater. It maintains the HAG probe at 69 degrees Celsius, depending if it is amine or ammonia acid gas. What looks like a sealed unit is quite easily disassembled and accessed, as we will show. Let's take a look at the internals of the HAG probe, the sample system components. This is the membrane filter to prevent the ingress of liquids into the sample system. This is the aspirator, provides the motor force for the sample and the return of the spent sample to process. On this next layer, we have the backing plate for the membrane filter and a fiber filter attached here for the collection of any particulates to prevent plugging of the sample system. This is the double block mechanism, ball valves, and needle valves. 
isolation from the process is by means of double block, ball valve, and needle valves on both the sample and the vent. When the sample valves are closed, the aspirator drive air purges all of the acid gas from the sample system. The technician can be assured it is fully isolated from the process, free of all H2S. I want to really emphasize the safety aspects of the HAG probe. Double block isolation, low dead volume, return of the spent sample to process, purged of all sample gas for maintenance access. Safety is the prime concern. Keep it simple and make it safe. Back to the soft recovery process for just a minute. One of the economic drivers for a feed gas analyzer relates to sulfur recovery units followed by a tail gas treating unit. Let me take you through this. When hydrocarbon in the acid gas suddenly increases, the feedback loop will add air to the reaction furnace to adjust for the air demand of the increasing amount of hydrocarbon. In the absence of a feed gas analyzer, when the hydrocarbon suddenly goes away, the extra air will result in an SO2 spike in the tail gas and possible damage to the amine in the tail gas treating unit. The feed gas analyzer makes the adjustment at the front end and thereby preventing the SO2 spike because it's not when the hydrocarbon comes in that makes for the problem, it's when the hydrocarbon goes away. To summarize, the IPS4 analyzer and HAG probe is the unique combination of infrared and UV photometers with no moving parts, a safe, integral, low-volume sample handling system. Thank you very much for your time today.